This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad and live today. If someone were to ask you, what is prayer? What would you say? A good starting point might be to say what prayer is not. Prayer is not magic. It's not some special chant or specific set of words that are used to control God as if he were a genie in a bottle. Prayer is not making demands of God. It's not some sort of barter system where if God does this for me, then I'm going to do that for him. And prayer is not some ritual that is solely reserved for mealtimes before bed or only in church. Rather, prayer is an open dialogue with God, honestly engaging with him as good friends should and do. Prayer is talking and listening. It's saying, thank you, Lord, for this day. But it's also pleading, help me find my way, God, because... I'm in a dark and terrible place right now. In the Gospel of Matthew, we see a woman who is in a dark and terrible place. She's desperate, persistent, and she will not give up, for her daughter is possessed by a demon. So this woman cries out to Jesus for help. In essence, she's praying to Jesus as she says, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. Now, a very critical piece of the puzzle for this story is who this woman is. She's a Canaanite woman, a Gentile, someone who is not of the chosen race. The Canaanites had been enemies of the Jews since the time of Moses and Joshua, continually fighting over the same land. It's a story that has repeated itself over and over through the years. So here we have this enemy of the Jews asking Jesus, a Jew, for help. She has to know that very likely she will get rejected and possibly physically removed from his presence, for she's an outsider. But she also realizes that Jesus is her only hope. Jesus is her last straw. She is putting herself out there for her child. We come to find that the reality of the scenario is that, yes, indeed, the disciples want to get rid of this woman. They are embarrassed by her. So they call on Jesus to send her away. They want nothing to do with her. Her crying and pleading and praying to Jesus registers as nothing more than shouting for the disciples. Blah, 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 blah. They find her behavior to be annoying. But Jesus doesn't send her away. And instead, he decides to enter into a conversation with her. Jesus tells her that he was sent by God to be the shepherd to the lost sheep of Israel, which obviously she's not a member of. This woman is considered an outcast, a dog, if you will. The woman then replies that she might be a dog, but even the dogs get scraps from the table. And that's the moment when this woman's faithfulness is rewarded, as Jesus relents and heals the woman's daughter of her demon possession. This is such a fascinating conversation and series of events, but It's also one that we should read in the context of Jesus' previous conversation with his disciples, a conversation where Jesus is trying to open their eyes and show them the true wonder and breadth of God's love and salvation. In that conversation, Jesus tells them, you know what, let's forget about the old rules about food and what we can and can't eat. He says that the food that goes into one's mouth, it doesn't defile a person, but rather it's what comes out of their mouth that defiles. For what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and that is what marks someone as unclean, their heart. In light of this revelation from Jesus to the disciples, I can't help but think that the dialogue that he has with this woman is as much a test of the disciples' faith as it is of the woman's faith. Let me explain. When this woman comes to Jesus, all the disciples see is an unclean Canaanite. The disciples are still living by the old rules that the Canaanites are no friend of the Jews. They don't take into account what is coming out of her mouth. In other words, what is proceeding from her heart. And so they want to send her away. Jesus, on the other hand, looks at this woman with compassion and says, Great is your faith it shall be done. It's actually quite remarkable. This woman believes. She hangs in there. She puts herself on the line knowing that she is on the outside and seen to be unworthy. But thankfully, Jesus is not bound by society and its earthly rules. Jesus is all about turning things upside down. 
Jesus is all about revealing the kingdom of God to the world. Jesus extends his promise of love to all people. He invites everyone to the table, regardless of their race, their beliefs, their country of origin, or societal standing. We are all unworthy recipients of the love of God, but yet we have all been saved by Jesus' death on the cross. Jesus is telling the disciples, and he's telling us, that we need to extend to others this invitation to be in a relationship with him. Practically what this means is that we need to listen to Jesus. We need to not judge people by their differences, but by the content of their heart. We need to be accepting of that modern-day Canaanite woman, in other words, that person who has been cast off to the side and sent to the fringes of our own society. And guess what? We can't stop there either. For there are those out in the world that don't have the same conviction of that Canaanite woman. And therefore, we need to speak up for those who do not have a voice. We need to uplift those who have given up and feel as though there is nothing good left for them in this world. We need to love those who have grown up in a world filled with hatred and with violence. We need to comfort the lonely as they strain on a daily basis to just hear a kind word only to be met with silence from a busy world that doesn't even know that they exist. Yes, like the Canaanite woman, these are all of God's children too, and it is our job to depart from the comforts of our own social bubbles to bring them the good news of Jesus. We do this by showing them the love that springs forth from our faith. We do this by praying for them and praying with them, listening to their needs. We do this by giving them a voice so that someday they can stand up and say, Lord, help me, have mercy on me. The good news of Jesus Christ is a gift for all people, a love that has no limits, a love that has no bounds. May we be like Jesus and just throw out all the old rules. Let's all live in a new way as we extend and reveal his promise of welcome, acceptance, compassion, and love to all people. Amen. Remember as you go about your day that yesterday is gone, tomorrow does not yet belong to you. So why not live today? knowing that you never walk alone. We'll see y'all next week. Later.